New head of the army said in an internal message to troops last week, he said there is now a burning imperative to forge an army capable of fighting alongside our allies and defeating Russia in battle. So why are ministers pushing ahead with plans to cut another 10,000 yeah, soldiers? Yeah, yeah. When will he halt these cuts and when will he start to rebuild the strength of the British Army to meet the threats that our country and our NATO allies face? Minister. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I'm grateful for the Honourable Gentleman's questions. And as ever, Mr Speaker, we are grateful for the support of the opposition with regard to our Ukraine uh, defence policy. Uh, to go straight to the questions, um, in terms of new contracts, uh, they, they are under discussion, Mr Speaker, and the Defence uh, Minister for Defence Procurement and the Prime Minister had a, had a, had a, had a meeting this morning, uh, the, the latest in a series of discussions, Mr Speaker, about escalating the, the, the supply of NATO standard equipment, which is very important. Uh, he spoke about training, and that was a very significant uh, uh, um, uh, result of um, the Prime Minister's um, visit last week, and of course I think um, the Defence actually also had some discussions. I, I, being not privy to those discussions, it's not appropriate for me to uh, speculate, uh, uh, speculate about their content of the dispatch box, Mr Speaker, but what I can say is that the reference point for the UK's contribution will be the uh, remarkably successful uh, Operation Orbital that trains, that trains some 25,000 uh, Ukrainian soldiers uh, since 2014. We have a long, deep heritage of working very closely and successfully with our Ukrainian allies, and I think that will be a very good basis on which to conduct uh, future training support. And uh, as to which uh, NATO um, allies might be involved, Mr Speaker, I can't confirm that, but uh, I would say that uh, NATO, uh, by disposition, tends to work in alliance, so I expect other nations uh, to be involved. I'm, very great. I'm glad for the update about his, his, uh, his visit to PGHQ, but I, I would ask him to be a bit more optimistic about our absolute resolve about meeting our commitments. Mr Speaker, it's not simply about, um, it's not, it, it's about uh, a disposition in which we are um, it's, it's about a disposition in which we are absolutely resolute to be agile and uh, um, uh, strain every sinew to deliver at pace the technological and military revolution that we need to deliver in order to make ourselves more lethal and agile and deployable around the world than ever before. Uh, for too long, Mr Speaker, the measurement of our military capability is about men and vehicles in, in, in garrisons rather than our ability to project power, and that's something we are absolutely confident that we are getting right. And I think that proves the point, Mr. B Mr. Speaker. Apart from um, the fact that CGS is mentioning Russia, I think it demonstrates that uh, since March last year, this has been part of our drop that's, not not that's nothing new. And uh, under the, uh, the leadership that we are showing and the, um, the determination for us to change and embrace modern technology as part of our ability to deliver lethal effect, Mr. Speaker, uh, I think we are getting to a point where, where we are more, more match fit than ever before. Uh, to, to counter Russian aggression. Thoughts?